Here we go, it's last week of the auction. America's favorite top 10 list of auction results from around the globe. All hand selected by me, Josh Levine, your host and guide to the world of auctions, and this is episode eight of season three and continues to be the hottest YouTube series and social media sensation in the entire world. Okay, the auction world. But with over 10,000 subscribers now and 1 million views, what are you waiting for? Subscribe today. Everybody's doing it. And with that, welcome back current subscribers and hello newbies because I got the goods again. Amazing auction results, fun facts, and so much more. You might just learn something today. It's last week at the auction. Let's play doctor. Number 10 is a J.H. Gemring surgeon's kit with assorted medical tools that hammered for $400 at Brunk Auctions. Vintage medical and dental devices are one of those genres with quite a following. They make great conversation pieces when they're put in showcases or on display, and when you see them, you probably often wonder, like I do, how we survived as a species. But it makes me wonder if we're going to look back 100 years from now at the same tools that we're using currently with the same level of curiosity. I'm actually sure we will. Number nine is a Victorian pickle caster that sold for $650 at Woody's. It was a beautiful amberina hobnail pattern by Mount Washington, and it's nice to see collectors still appreciate these elegant 19th century table accessories. The casters were used back in the day to serve pickles and other pickled fruits and vegetables, and wealthy Victorians considered having one of these set on a table the pinnacle of elegant dining. What an interesting time to study. In keeping with elegance, number eight is a vintage 2003 Chateau Petrus that brought 2200 at Leland Little. I might have butchered that pronunciation, but that's okay. Anyway, I chose to feature this because it's quite common for the old booze in an estate to get tossed out during a cleanout. I know, shock and horror just went down your spine, but it's true. Many don't know what to do with it, and in fact, in many states, you can't resell it without a special license or a permit. But I challenge you to find out. I've seen many in a state with amazing bottles of wine and spirits just to be given away or donated or worse, tossed out because they A, didn't know they could resell them, or B, know how much the collection was worth. Number seven is a 1982 Gibson Moderna electric guitar that brought $3,000 at Matthew Bullock Auctioneers. Many don't know this design is actually a reissue of Gibson's 1957 series of concept guitars. They were way ahead of their time. And in 1982, they were part of the Heritage Reissue series. I think these will appreciate over the years as they, have never, they never sold well back in their day and they're really quite rare to find now. Number six is a Pennsylvania Chippendale walnut chest that brought $4,250 at Brunk Auctions. I don't know why I get excited every time I get to point out some period furniture doing well, but I think it might be making a bit of a comeback. This late 18th century offering was very diminutive. It was 34 by 35 by 21, but I was thrilled to see the 1980s, 90s kind of money. It's been a while for period furniture and maybe it's coming back. Stay tuned. Number five is a pair of German brass bell based candlesticks that brought $6,500 at Brunk Auctions. They've had quite a few on the list today. They had a wonderful multi-day sale with lots of highlights and learning opportunities. I chose to feature these because my wife and I had just been looking for a pair and she said, I, I'm looking for a cheap pair of brass candlesticks. And I immediately flashed back to my father trying to explain to me the difference to how, how to tell a period example from reproductions. Of course, I didn't pay any attention, but I still haven't found a cheap pair yet either. These sure weren't. How about a nice robe? Number four is a Chinese embroidered formal court robe that brought 11,500 at Leland Little. Beautiful work in the Qing Dynasty, most likely the 19th century, but you know what? These can be found at estate sales and antique stores, and there are many sleepers out there. You know, I've, I haven't found too many experts that can tell the difference between a $300 one and a $3,000 robe. But that tells me, if you find one for a few hundred bucks and it's beautiful, it might be a good gamble. These guys get some amazing stuff, but I just watched the movie, which is probably why this one grabbed my attention. Number three is a Fred Rogers sweater that brought $12,500 at Julian's. Yes. That's the Mr. Rogers in one of his iconic sweaters. 
Julian's features some of the most incredible memorabilia sales you'll ever see, and it seems like it's month in and month out, but this one was perfect for the holiday spirit. The lot included a touching note where Rogers writes of sending this sweater to a fan in need. He truly was a unique and wonderful man. Number two is a map of South Carolina that just sold for $36,000 at Brunk Auctions. It was by the cartographer de Brom and quite large. It was circa 1757. It was in wonderful condition, age considering, and I'm really impressed by the 18th century map's level of detail. It was framed, and I told you it was large. It was 56 by 50, and I hope you're taking a second look at old maps when you come across them. They may not be treasure maps, but they may be worth a fortune. This one was just weird and strange to me, and I had to put it in the top spot. Number one was titled, A Rare American Queen Anne Filigree and Wax Sconce, and it brought $180,000 at Brunk Auctions. Most likely from Boston, the early 18th century, this sconce was meticulously de decorated with like an elaborate arrangement of wax, fruit, and flowers, and it even had these cut fabric leaves. I was thinking to myself, you have art made from wax that was decorating a thing that burns wax. What could possibly go wrong or better that aha moment I had of that's why they're so rare. Again, only at auction will you come across things like this. But now if you find one, you're going to be in the know. And now you know what happened last week at the auction. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the show, before you go, subscribe below. It's free. Give me a thumbs up and be sure to post a comment or a question, you know, and make sure you check out all the great auction houses I talked about on today's show. There's so much learning there. And many thanks to the Lucky Odds of San Antonio for allowing me to use their hit song, Whiplash. Check them out at theluckyodds.com. Until next week or last week at the auction.